The Trans-Canada Highway can seem like an impenetrable barrier to wildlife crossing the Bow Valley. But look closer. What is this? An overpass for wildlife. Does it work? Yes. 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 Over 84,000 uses of 24 highway crossing structures have been recorded in the past 10 years. How do we know? Researchers have been monitoring the crossings with track pads and some with sensor-activated cameras. Data is collected every two days in summer, every four days in winter. Once the tracks are recorded, the track pad gets raked clean for the next go-round. This little box contains a digital camera, which captures a series of images when triggered by an animal using the overpass, such as this family of grizzly bears. Grizzly bears and wolves are more likely to use overpass crossings versus the underpasses. An earth berm on each side of the overpass muffles noise from the highway below and blocks the glare of headlights at night. Trees and shrubs on the structure make this appear like any other natural area. The red sticks in the foreground here indicate the middle of the track pad and the range of each camera. You can also see the barbed wire strung across the overpass at strategic heights. This wire is intended to catch hair samples from two indicator species of interest, bears and wolves. Watch how the wire snags the bear's fur. Wolves sometimes choose to go underneath. Hair samples have been collected from May to October since 2004. We want to know how many individuals are using the crossings and how closely they are related to each other. This will help to determine if we have enough genetic diversity within these groups to sustain healthy populations. Researchers check the hair snags every day during the monitoring period to collect and record any samples caught by the wire. The samples are then sent to a lab for DNA analysis. We can be pretty sure that this sample is from a black bear because of the tracks left in the sand below. Here we've got a couple of tufts of fur from a wolf. Most of the hair found on the snags is from the target species because the placement of the wire is such that moose, elk and deer just hop over. This cautious bull elk takes a moment to assess the wire before he crosses. Watch the time signature in the top of the photo, just to the left of center. Now see if you can spot the deer in the distance in this sequence. Did you see it? Let's look again. Cameras also record the date, time and temperature. The bottom left corner identifies the location of the camera. This abbreviation stands for Wolverine Overpass West. The two overpasses in Banff National Park are fairly well recognized, but what fewer people notice are the 22 underpasses built into the highway. These underpasses are constructed in several different styles. This is a culvert, like a larger version of the kind of culvert commonly used for drainage on roadways. Some of the crossings use the 4 meter by 7 meter elliptical culvert design. Like the culvert, this box structure suits animals that prefer cover and constricted spaces, such as black bears and cougars. Smaller species, like this pine marten, and this least weasel, also use these confined underpasses, although their numbers are not counted in the highway study. Ungulates tend to prefer open spans. Sometimes herds of elk, sheep or deer have been observed grazing in these areas. Waterways naturally funnel wildlife along their banks. By expanding the bridge on the highway and making a path below, we make use of this feature. This bridge on the Bow River employs the same idea on a bigger scale. Banff National Park is an international leader in wildlife highway crossing structures. Nowhere else on earth has as many in such a short distance or as many styles of construction. And nowhere else has there been such a thorough and long-term study of their use and effectiveness. What we have learned from studying the existing over and underpasses, in combination with other studies on wildlife movement in the valley, is being used in the next phase of fencing and twinning the Trans-Canada Highway between Castle Junction and Lake Louise. But many questions remain unanswered. Are enough bears and wolves using the crossings? What are the long-term effects of the crossing structures? And how can others apply this knowledge elsewhere in the world? 
This audio CD was created by the Banff Eco-Integrity Project. We hope you've enjoyed it. 